there's a cat bird in here and sometimes squeaking will allow us to, to bring the bird in. I'm Dr. Peter Mera. I'm a research scientist at the Smithsonian Migratory Bird Center at the National Zoo. We're down here on the National Mall. We're capturing birds to study West Nile virus. We're studying the birds, the birds that carry the virus, so we set up mist nets, fine nylon mesh nets uh, that birds can't see, so when they're flying through the area, they actually can't see the net and they get caught in the net. It's totally harmless to them, and we capture them multiple times over the season, from May until October, to understand how the virus gets more and more intense to the point where it actually can be transmitted to humans. And we're studying this over a urbanization gradient. So this area here is a lot, very, very urban, lots of impermeable surface, and that means very few mosquitoes. But we also have sites in really forested areas in Virginia and the eastern shore of Maryland where mosquito abundance can be very, very high. So we'd expect West Nile virus also to potentially be very high there. Here on the mall, we'll be catching species like gray catbirds, house sparrows, an invasive species, uh, pigeons. We could also catch song sparrows. We come along, we check the nets every 20 minutes, we pull the birds out, and we take a small blood sample from their wing, we ban the birds, and we release them. Then we come back two or three weeks later, and we catch them again, and we bleed them again. And over the course of the summer, or that West Nile virus breeding season, so to speak, we have multiple uh, samples that we can actually look at and learn how West Nile virus is transmitted over that breeding season in the same individual birds. So one of the interesting stories that we've found and we've published on is that robins are an important part of this, the story. When robin abundance is really high, mosquitoes will actually go out and choose robins over people to, to, to bite and potentially infect. When robin abundance goes down, Mosquitoes switch hosts, and they actually start biting humans more than they bite robins. So in, if there was all of a sudden a peak in West Nile virus emergence, we would start looking at birds to tell us more about the story. What's going on with bird abundance? Uh, that's, so birds are playing a really important role here, and we really want to understand what's controlling the emergence of West Nile virus. The data from the mosquitoes, the data from the birds, are all written up and published into papers that are, that are put into journals. We publicize these in newspapers and magazines. We give talks at national meetings. We talk to local health departments to further advertise and, and discuss the importance of our results to ultimately influence and minimize the impact that West Nile virus will have on human health.